there's a site called gophereyes.me. And this website lets you customize the Go Gopher. So this is the mascot for the Golang project. And you can do things like change the eyes or change the color of the gopher's body. And there's a lot of different things like shirts and hair that you can add to it. So we basically want to create a very lightweight version of this for plenty using our mascot. So let's take a look at doing that now. So I quickly wanted to introduce our designer, Stephanie. She's the creator of the Plenty Planarian that we call Perry. Now we picked the Planarian as our mascot for our project because they have a very simple structure to them. And we want our project to mirror that exactly. Planarians are also cool because you can divide them in many sections and they actually regenerate and have ultimate flexibility. And that's exactly how we picked our content structure for the project. Now, Stephanie, do you want to talk a little bit about your inspiration for the design that you created since we're going to be using that for our demo? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, we were talking about like what we want to do for a mascot and I really love this idea of how the planarian can split and regenerate. But then I looked at, I, I googled planarian because I actually didn't know what it was and it's just this worm and I was like, uh, I don't know, Jim, I don't know if we can really do anything with this thing. but. I, I took a look at it and I noticed it had like these kind of cute eyes. It has like these big eyes with the little dots in the middle and they look, it just looks kind of goofy. And I was like, you know what, I think I can play with this. And from several, many iterations, I was able to come up with some cartoony, cute little guy that now we call Perry, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so Stephanie's created a bunch of iterations on this with different accessories and facial features. And we're gonna use that to create our changer which we're gonna hop into in a second. So let's start by taking a look at the gopherize.me website. And you can see here by inspecting the element that we have a container class which specifies the max width for this section. And then we have a row, and then we have a couple columns. The first column has the actual gopher graphic, and then the second column over here has the options that you can choose. Now, it looks like they're using Bootstrap based on the column names here, but I think we can accomplish something similar by using something like CSS Flexbox. Now, the first step over here would be to create a new project. So on my desktop, I'm going to create a new project and we're gonna name it Perry since Perry is the planarian's name. And I'm going to pass the bear flag because I don't want any of the default starter information to be included in the project. So if I create that and I see the inside of the new folder called Perry, if I open this up in Codium, you can see the file structure. So one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is there's not a lot inside the content and the layout folders. So if I were to come here and start up my project by coming in and doing a plenty serve, then copy this and open this in Firefox, you'll see that we just have a pretty much a blank site with my plenty site. So this is what the bear starter looks like. So back in our text editor, if we come over here in our index.json, it really just has this section here. That's the title. And we might want to leave something like this, but maybe we'll rename this to customize your planarian. And then let's just add a bunch of options here. And for options, we'll have things like body and body will be an array of items. And then we'll have eyes and maybe shirts. And let's come up here and let's make sure we have our JSON in a valid format. You got to add a comma there and we can save this. And we won't really see much changes on the front end here besides the title here, but we can start thinking about how we actually want to lay some of this out. Now, we're really going to need the SVGs exported into the correct folder.
All right, so we have most of our SVGs in there now. If we take a look back at our project, we can see that we have a bunch of accessories, a bunch of bodies, eyes, and shirts. So let's now just go and let's match these file names in our options here. So that gives us options we can actually choose on the front end to actually pull in those SVGs. So I'll just do that real quick. Okay, now we've added all the options and we could actually go over to our templates now and we could go to our content section here and go to our index.spelt file and we could pull in these options. So under our title, we could say for each options as option, we could pull in that information. So first we have to make sure that we're getting that variable. So we have the title variable pulled in, but let's pull in the options variable. And then so for each option, we can just say, give us the option. And actually, now that I'm thinking of this, we actually don't need to loop over any of these. We have four defined keys in our options. We really just need to loop over the individual items in those. So we could come in here and let's do this for each options dot body. We'll call this body. And then let's do the same thing for the other types. So we have eyes shirts and accessories. And if we save that and we list out these, so you can see, okay, we're getting all the options now in different ways. Okay, so we're, we're getting closer here. Let's start formatting this a little bit. Let's come up and let's put everything inside a container. We can actually do that at our global HTML section here. So we have this idea of a body, but we can also do something like this. We can put this inside of a section. Actually, we don't even need an ID since we can scope this to this specific HTML element. And we could just say styles, since these are scoped styles, we can say something like section should have max width. 900 pixels and margin of zero auto and that should center it for us it could probably be it could be 1200 okay that looks fine and then we want to have this title be fine in its own section but we really want this to be over in a right hand sidebar so that's what we're gonna do over here in the actual index spelt file. So the title can be here, but we really want something like this. And we want our options So this is going to be options. And then we're also going to have a section here, although we don't have it drawn yet. And this is basically going to be our image. We'll call it our render. Okay, and then we really want to wrap these two sections in a wrapper here. So let's just do something like this. Div ID main, something like that. And then let's just put these sections inside of that. And let's style our main. So let's do something like main is display flex. Save that. Let's just take a look over here. Okay, so you're not noticing anything too crazy right now because this action, this other section here doesn't have any content in it. It's completely blank. So let's just hard code something as a placeholder there so we can make this take up a little bit of space. I'm actually just going to pull an image tag in here and we'll say image source equals and we'll get from our assets folder our body blue dot SVG and let's just put that on the screen for a second here. Now, we'll get a little bit of an error here saying that we should have an alt tag because we're not being 
screen reader accessible. So we'll just say alternative text is the body of the planarian. And we'll save that. Okay, so now we're pulling in the right image here and we have the text over here on the right hand side. Let's take a look at what's shown here. So we have our section and then we have our main and then we have two sections in here with options. So now I think a good step would be to actually start formatting this just so it looks a little bit more like options. So one thing we can do, let's go back to our editor here and go back to our index. And let's just wrap each one of these in a div. So something like this. And that should just give a little bit of separation between each one of those sections. So if we reload that, okay. So now we have the first grouping of items, the second, the third, and the fourth. All right, now let's give each one of these sections a quick title. So we'll come here and we'll call this body. Eyes, shirt, accessories. Come over here. Okay, so we have that. And I think we want to format these all into their own divs. So let's do something like this. Okay, and maybe we'll add a break after each one of these as well. So in between these, let's add just a BR tag to put a little bit of space. We'll copy that and put it after each one of these divs. Save. So now we're getting a lot closer with what we're looking for. Now we want to add a little space in between each one of these and we want to make them links so we can actually start clicking on individual items. And then we we'll want to bind this information over here to the information that's selected over here. Okay, so let's start playing around with some of the actual value that's being pulled in here. Let's say that image body equals blue. And then down here, let's put in image body as a replacement value here. Let's save this. and reload this page. Okay, so now if we were to come back here and we were to change this to yellow and save this, you see that it would change that value. So what we really wanna do is be able to click on one of these links and have that happen for us. So let's come back here and let's undo that. Let's leave that at blue for now. And then let's come down here to this section here. And we'll wrap this in an anchor tag to make it a link and we'll give it a blank href like that. And let's just put the body in the middle here. And then let's come here and let's put an on click handler. So we'll do on click and we'll make this equal a function that we'll call set body. And inside that we'll actually pass the value of body to it. So let's come up and let's actually define set body. So we'll say const set body. We'll use an arrow function syntax. So it equals body the value we're passing in and then we'll just say image body equals body we'll save that now if we come back here reload this we have some options here so now I can click orange we reload we can set an initial color but it doesn't let us set any other colors here so it only lets you set one at a time Let's try removing this href here. And we'll get a warning about that, but we don't want to actually have the href doing anything here. So, okay. Now we can click through each one of these individual things. So previously it was trying to use the default anchor tags href value to change. But since we've removed that, we can now click multiple values and change them. Now, if we want the best of both worlds to be able to use this as a regular link and allow us to choose multiple selections, 
we can actually come back here. We could add back in our href here, but on our on click, we'll pass this flag called prevent default, and that'll prevent the link from using its default href here. Let's come back here and let's reload this page. So we have our links again, and now we can choose multiple selections here and still have the link behavior. We are getting another flag just saying that it's not valid to use this hashtag attribute. So we could put something else in here like this if we wanted just to make the compiler happy. It's not going to change anything because we're still preventing the default behavior. If we come back here and reload, we still get that experience now where we can change these different options. So we can start making this section here look a little bit better, but a bigger thing I think we need to tackle is layering other images on top of this one. So let's come back over here and let's just take a look at doing something like that. Let's grab this image section here and let's do something like this. Let's make an eyes section. And just like we did before, let's set a default eye. So we're going to grab this and we're going to say image eyes. And when we reference it down here, we don't want to reference image body. We want to reference image eyes. And let's save that and just see what it looks like as of now. So this is appearing down here because we need to make this an absolutely positioned thing so these can appear on top of each other. So we have these two images. If we make this position absolute, left zero, and we'll call this position relative so we can tack our absolute positioning to it. Now we can start playing with this a little bit. Now this is not exact. I'm just doing this a little bit fast to make this demo, but you could come through and you can make this a lot better if you wanted to. For now, let's just say this is about the position we want it to be, 110 pixels, and then we'll say top, maybe it's 40 pixels, something like that. So that looks okay. I think we could just copy this style and add it. We should probably add a specific class to these images so we can style them appropriately. Let's call this one eyes and then we'll position the container as well. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to give this an ID eyes and we can give this one an ID as well. We'll call this body and then Let's make sure we add our style here. So we have eyes, has these styles. And we have to target our render as well. So our render is the container up here that holds the images. And let's give render a position of relative in order to tack the absolute positioned element to the element. Let's come back here and let's refresh. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's update the eyes option over here to give the same type of treatment that we gave the body. And that way we can switch out the eyes as well. So right now we can still switch out the body, but let's make it so we can switch out the eyes. So let's come back over here. And in our eyes section, we're gonna do something very similar. We're gonna grab this, I'm gonna paste it in here. Now, instead of set body, we'll do set eyes and we'll pass eyes and we'll give the link the title of eyes. Now we can get rid of this eyes here and we just have to define something very similar up above just like this. So instead of set body, we're going to set eyes. We're going to pass the eyes variable and then we'll set the image eyes to eyes. Save that, come back over here refresh. So now we have, ooh, yep, great. We can change these to different things. The positioning's a little off on some of these because uh, we didn't have them sized perfectly the same, but a lot of them work. So the color ones work really well because the eyes are the same shape. I think if we wanted to make things like these lashes, uh, where's the lashes? Lashes was a little bit bad because this is a wider image given the eyelashes, so it pushes it to the side. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. That's something we could perfect a little bit, with a little more work, but let's just go and finish the rendering of this basic stuff here. So let's do the same thing with the shirts. We'll come in here, do the exact same thing. So we'll say image, we'll call it shirt, singular. And let's see, what's a default shirt that we have here? 
we'll say Svelte is our default shirt. Okay. And we'll have the same idea here. So we'll grab this and we'll call this shirt. And this will use the image shirt. And let's update our alt text so that's accurate. So the eyes of the planarian, the shirt of the planarian. And let's come down here. Let's do something very similar with our shirt. And we'll say set shirt, passing in the shirt variable. And the text that you click on is going to be called shirt. We'll save that. And we have to do a couple things. So we have to create the set shirt. Same thing, we'll just copy it, paste, set, shirt, passing in shirt. And then we'll just set image shirt to that value. And then the one, last thing we have to do here is just style because this is actually not going to put in the right position right now. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So it's still looking to eyes. That's why it's displaying the default text. So where do we make the mistake? It looks like we're looking in the wrong folder here. We're looking in the eyes folder for these images. We need to be looking in the shirts folder. So let's save that again. Come back over here. Give it a refresh. Okay, so now we're at least getting the shirts. We have go, plenty, spelt, and a regular yellow shirt. Now let's just position this. So let's come to our spelt shirt here. And let's inspect that element. Let's grab this and let's position it absolute. And we'll say top zero, but then we'll bring that down. And then we'll say left zero, but then we'll bring that up. And just move it right into the right position. Something like this is close. Maybe we want it down a little bit more. Something like that works pretty good, I think. So we'll grab that and we'll make that our styling for our shirt ID. So I'm gonna come over here and we'll just go back to the bottom here. And just like we did eyes, we'll do shirt. Okay, save that. Come back and let's take a look here. So we can change our shirts out. Very cool. Change our eyes out. That's pretty neat. Change our background. Cool. So we have this interactive thing working. Let's just add the accessories, see how that is. And then we'll format over here just to make this look a little bit better. And then basically we'll have a finished working product. Now, of course, we could come back through and make sure things are sized a little bit different. So we might come back and edit some of these SVGs. And then eventually maybe we'll release this as a public facing website so people can play around with it. Let's come through and let's add this last section here first. So we'll come up, we know we need a variable called image accessories. And in our accessories, we can start with maybe the mask. We'll set accessory. And actually, we want this to be singular. You can only have one accessory at a time. And we'll pass in a variable eventually called accessory. And we'll set image accessory to that value. And let's come over here. Let's render an image. Now this is gonna be a difficult one because these accessories aren't always positioned in the exact same way. So let's see if we can get it kind of close, but this may be one that takes a little more finessing and possibly we'd have to break this up into different categories like facial hair or hats because it's not one thing that we could uniformly position unless we wanted to tie individual position to each one of these. Now that's something we could definitely do and maybe we'll take a look at how we do that, but basically you'd break up each one of these items in your data source and you could add positioning 
information to these items and that would allow you to override the default positioning and have specific positioning based on the item. So let's look at the image accessory and add this and make sure that this is the accessory of the planarian. We'll save that and come down, make sure we get something similar to this and use it to get our accessory. So we'll set our accessory to the accessory value and okay delete that and let's save this and of course we'll set the positioning again but we'll have to do that manually so let's just save this oh so it's looking like it can't find the accessory can't find our default accessory at least so that's because this folder is actually accessories not accessory let's change that save that Reload. Okay, so we have the mask, the birthday hat, hair, and a lot of cool things like that. Let's just set it. Let's bring up the, the Rick right now and see if we can get that positioned at least. So I'm going to inspect this element. And again, we'll position this absolute. And we'll say top is zero. I have to make this a little negative. So this is not sized appropriately to fit on this current permutation. So I would have to adjust the size of this exact SVG to work with this planarian. So let's take a look at another item here. Let's take a look at the mask and let's move this to a specific position here. And like we did before, we'll move it over. I think this can come up a little bit something like that and maybe over a little bit more like that so i think that's pretty good for the mask now obviously the other items here aren't going to be exactly positioned because of that so uh this this one's going to need a little bit of work to get it exactly right but some of them are close the glasses actually look kind of close and the mask looks kind of close but the rest of these are going to need a little bit of work for now we're not going to worry too much about that i'm going to save this as it is so we'll come back over here and we'll grab the accessory ID. And we'll do position absolute. And we'll say top is 48 pixels, left is 45 pixels. And we'll save that. Reload. So, okay. So now we can change the shirts and we can change some accessories, although those don't fit exactly in the right position. So the next thing we want to do is probably just style these links a little bit. So I'm thinking we just will take this section here and make it a grid. So this is the container for each section. I'll do something like this. I'll make it display grid. And then I'll say something like grid template columns. And we'll make them each about 25% of the width. So we'll do 25%, 25%, 25%. And what we want to do is we want to take the title out of here as well. So I'll probably move the HTML around so the title is above the container possibly. And then we'll also just come here and we'll make a grid row gap and give that maybe 20 pixels. So there's a little bit of space there. And that way this will all be spaced out and we can click these links a little bit easier and distinguish between them. So let's go through and do something like that. So back in our Svelte file for our index, let's do something like this. Let's give each one of these the same class. So we'll say class and we'll just say links. And I'm going to make sure I have this copied. And I'll just add this for the next items. Now, in this section here, we'll say links and we'll add the style that we just put into the browser. And then we really wanna pull those titles out. So we should do something, and actually I put these in the wrong place. So it'd be better to grab this here and put it in the container and do the same for the rest of these. And once that's in the container element, you can really just grab the title 
and just paste it above. And do the same thing for each one of these. So grab that, paste it above but below the break here. Paste it above and paste this above as well. So then if we save this, we should be able to come back here, refresh the page. Okay, so now we're, we're getting a little closer. We should probably add the fourth column over here. So I, I had only done three, but some of these longer lists, it might look a little better with four. So if we came back in here, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to inspect the element, grab the container for that, and let's just add a fourth. So something like that might look a little bit better. And then we might want this section to take up the full space over here on the right so we could do something like flex grow one and add it like that. And then maybe we also want to give it some padding. So give it maybe 40 pixels of padding, maybe none at the top, but on the sides you want something like that. And that's getting a lot better there. I wonder if we just want the padding on the left to be honest, 40 pixels, something like that might be kind of good. Maybe make this 60 pixels. So let's add this style here. So this is to our options section. Let's come back over here to our options section here. Doesn't look like we're targeting this at all yet. So let's grab options and let's paste that style in there. And then we added the other column to this grid here. So let's add the 25% to that column. Now we have four columns, save that. Let's just refresh this page to make sure that that works. So now we have these styles here, that looks pretty good and we can switch through them a little bit more easily. Now we can spend a little more time styling this to make it look a little bit better, but I'd rather focus on just updating this to show a couple examples of how to change these accessories to make them work. Now, the best way to do this would probably be to go back and make a very consistent template for the SVG. And basically the size of the template will be the exact size of the planarian here. So this exact box size. And then you just position the item exactly within that template, exactly where it should appear. So if the box is this big and the hat takes up only this amount of space, just place it right here at the top. And then for a beard, for instance, you'd place it down a little bit. That would be the better way to go. But since we just wanna show a little bit about how to use Svelte in plenty, it might be kind of cool to just show a quick example of how you might be able to adjust some of this to make it work with this specific picture here. So there are, I would say, three aspects that we really have to worry about. So there's the scale of the image. So let's take a look at this specific image here, this hat image. So that'd be the width, and we can say 100%, or we can bring that down. We could even do pixels, we could say 40 pixels and increase or decrease that size, so that's the scale. Then there's the position, so that's how far it is from the top. Is it 50 pixels down, or is it less? And how far is it to the left, or the right? And for instance, we might say 90, maybe it's more, something like this. So we really have to work out those three items here. Now what we can do is we can come over to our site, and where we're defining our data source options, instead of our accessories here just being plain items, we could actually use those as keys and then we could create an API for those items. Let's take a look at what that might look like. So this might be positioned correctly, something like this. So that looks about right for this hat. Now, obviously we'd have to push this whole thing down on the screen in order to make it look a little bit better. But for now, let's just do something like this. So we wanna change this from a regular list to an object. And then for the birthday hat, it will have its own items in that object. It will look something like this. It's a width, 110 pixels. It's a top of negative 98 pixels. And a left of 151 pixels. Now we have to go through each one of these objects and make sure we have these items and parameters set for them. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna go through and change each one of these objects to make sure we can get that information.
Okay, so we've gone and we've approximated the different positions that these need to be in. So essentially what we have to do now is update the API over here on our index dot spelt file. So previously we're just printing out this information, but really we need to get a little bit more information now. First thing that's gonna happen over here is this is going to break because it doesn't accommodate that anymore. So we have this saved now over here, make sure that's saved. If we reload the page, it's gonna be broken. All the accessories here are missing. You'll see everything else should work okay. But the accessories down here are missing. So since this is looking for an array, we actually have to update this a little bit to get the object entries. So if we save that, come back here and reload this, we're starting to get a little closer. So we're getting the antenna and then we're getting the object for it. We're getting the birthday hat, the object for it. So it's not gonna quite work if you click on this, obviously, but it's getting closer to getting the values that we need. So you can see here that we're getting the key and then we have an object. So if we wanna pull that out, we could just come back over here. We could update this to say, key, value, and then we'll just reference the key down here. Key, key, and if we save this, come back here and reload this, we're at least close to where we were before, right? So we have these items, but they're still positioned incorrectly. So now we can go and we can get the actual coordinates from that value object and use that to position these things correctly. So let's take a look at how this set up. We want this to get the style from those items here. So let's pass this value object into the set accessory function here. And let's save that. And let's come up here and we'll make a couple other variables here. So we'll say let accessory width. And we'll say this just equals, let's get the actual values from the mask here. So let's go here since the mask is the default, so 315 pixels. 315 pixel. And then we'll say let accessory top equal the mask defaults, which is 50 pixels. So we'll say 50 pixels. And then we'll let accessory left equal 49 pixels, 49 pixels. And save that. And then down here, we're basically going to grab this and we're gonna reset these values with the values from that value object. So get our value here as well. So wrap this like this. So now we're getting the value and let's make sure we get the value width, the value top, and the value left. And then what we wanna do is we wanna set these styles here. So we're going to make a style declaration. And the style declaration is going to say the width is accessory width, and I spelled that incorrectly, accessory width, and the top is accessory top, and the left is accessory left. Now if I save that, come back over. Let's reload this page. And see what's happening here. So this is not coming through yet. Let's take a look. Let's get rid of the semicolons as part of the item there. And let's put them in directly in here like this, just in case the parser is getting rid of that information. So we'll get rid of it there. We'll come up here and let's get rid of it as our defaults. And let's see if we can get it to at least render like that. Come over here. Okay. 
So it looks like the, at least the inline style is being added initially here, even though it's getting universally added and we're not adjusting it, but at least our initial style here is getting added. Okay, so that's good. Now we just have to come through here. We should get rid of all these semicolons in these items here because we're going to just have them manually there. So get rid of each one of these. Save that. Refresh this page. Okay, so now you can see that the items are getting the correct style and they're basically being adjusted when you click on these links to get the overrides that we added. So that's great. And the key here was making sure that we're not adding the semicolons directly because it's getting parsed out when we were actually putting them in here. You should have the semicolon as part here and just pull in the value, which is obviously seems like a better practice anyways. So that's a basic intro to using Plenty with your Svelte projects. I hope you enjoyed this demo and I hope you learned a lot and maybe you're excited about checking out Plenty on your own. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to us on Twitter. We're at Plentico or go to our repository. That's github.com forward slash Plentico. If you like this project, we'd love if you want to give the repository a star. It gives us motivation to keep working on it and also just helps us with our forward momentum and moving this project forward. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you enjoy the rest of the summit.